And welcome inside the Backstage Pass. It is a hump day, of course, and almost through the month of March. Hard to believe April's knocking on the door. Easter next week, and the time just keeps on ticking. Whether we like it or not here, of course, KKTC True Country 99.9 and our friends out there, too, at HighTideCountry.net. Always catch a show, the Sports Guys uh, podcast.com. And uh, the gentleman you see on the screen is my featured artist of the day here on a hump day. Uh, he's no stranger to this thing called sports and music. Uh, the new album, Low Lights, can be heard out there across all these streaming uh, platforms. We got to play a, a great song this morning. If you missed that, too, go back and check it out on the mornings with Shelly. Uh, Matt Jordan to the show. He's a regular. What's up, man? What's up, man? Thanks for having me. Good to be back. Yeah, good to be back, brother. Well, let's dive right into it because, uh, again, you guys put this out uh, there just a few weeks ago. I believe it was around the 22nd of uh, February, 23rd, somewhere in there. Uh, hit some streaming out there, too. Got to be excited about this project and 11 songs, man, to get into this the fans hands of country music yes sir we're excited to get it out man we've been working on the record for about a year and a half and it's good to finally have it out in the world talk to me about just song selection choices things that you know some people say we wrote this maybe three four years ago or we've been hanging yeah. on to this particular track and it finally made the record how tough was the or was it tough for song selection and song choices it was it was hard this time around for sure on our last album i feel like they the songs kind of made themselves more clear to us and and um you know they kind of found us this one we wrote a lot for trying to figure out what the project was and so it's hard to to decide what songs went on it there was a couple songs that were written before we kind of shifted gears into this mm -hmm. this chapter you know uh like steering wheel was one that we put on this record that we wrote several years ago and, and kind of held on to it uh to kind of be an anchor track and and now that we have the songs together and and, and out i wonder if we should have put that on the last record because i don't know if it sonically <laughs> fits as much but uh yeah it's always hard to pick songs you know we're writing so much it's always hard to decide mm -hmm. what what 10 or 11 you're going to put on the record you know no doubt too and like i said there's a little bit of this a little bit of that as a flavor for everybody which i love too because variety is the spice of life when you look down to it i think one that stuck out to me matt that i love was the outcast misfits and me let's let's dive into this one a little bit <laughs> yeah that, that's a that's a fun one i like that one that one's really fun to play live it's a uh, we wrote that song for this album but we had that idea many years ago uh my, my co-writer jared hartness and i i uh, write most of my stuff with him and, and he had thrown that idea at me four or five years ago probably and and we ended up writing something else that day and then he'd occasionally bring it up and uh, we tried to write it a couple times and, and the way we were, it was going, we just never landed on it. So we kind of shelved it for a bit. Uh, and eventually I, I came up with this, that chord progression, you know, and, mm -hmm. uh, came up with a couple lines for the first verse and I sent it to him and I said, Hey man, I think this is, uh, this is what we needed to do for outcast misfits and me. And he got all excited about it and, and we wrote it. So it was good to, you know, sometimes those, those songs kind of haunt you. You have an idea that, that you never land for a while and it's, it's fun when they finally land, you know? Talk to me about that. It's the beauty of that songwriting because I know there's so many different forms and fashions and it's so much a craft because to, to really just see something come from nothing or like an idea mm -hmm. or a hook. I mean, what's what's the Matt Jordan? Take me to that school of the Matt Jordan songwriting. What's the best part of it? The best part is when you finish it and you know this is a good <laughs> one. You know, um, there's no there's no magic or, or specific process, I don't think. It, it kind of changes song to song. Like Outcast, for example, it's a song that we've had the, the the hook the 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 chorus idea for for years but um and so we kind of knew where we were going with that but a lot of the songs on this record were different than the first record we put out a couple of years ago and that from a writing standpoint we were starting with music a lot of times on this record which is not typically how we write um i would build tracks on my computer here and send it to Jarrett, and we'd we'd think on it and, and noodle some ideas around and, and eventually land on something and so the music carried the writing process on this one more, which was interesting. And I think it was creatively uh, exciting for us both, you know, to, to be chasing music and trying to figure out what the story was instead of starting with the story and then trying to build the, the music around it like we usually do, you know. How important is it, I know for most records too, because I listen to the whole thing, I'll just listen to something that's like, you know, got a chart or something to push to radio mm -hmm. or something like with, with, <laughs> with the Apple, you got like, oh, that's a star bite. I might want to check that one out too as well. Yeah, yeah. But the cool thing is I liked anyone but me and I thought that really set the tone for a record. How key is that to like get a song at the top of the record to kind of set the tone for the rest of the songs that are on it too? That's a really good question. I, I've not been asked that before. I think it's really important. I think that, um, and it was intentional that that one was the first song because of that, because 
if you kind of listen to the album top to bottom, like I hope everyone does, and I know that's not how music's typically consumed anymore, but I still listen to music that way, yeah. and I hope people listen to the record that way. Guilty as charged. <laughs> yeah, right. There's kind of this, um, like this outsider theme that runs through the record, you know. And, and if you listen from top to bottom, you can kind of hear the angst in in the narrative at the beginning and at, towards the end of the record. It starts shifting to like almost celebration of being an outsider, you know. And anyone but me is probably the angstiest song on the record. And it kind of starts you in the middle of that story of this guy who's um, just feels like he's on the outside and he's on the run and stuff like that. So I think it does set the tone. I, I think it is important when you're sequencing a record like that to to start out strong and, and start out at the part of the story you want people to start, you know. And then you get to one. We'll have you play one here in a second. But you get to one that really ends it very well. And everything else that goes on with this record of like this roller coaster ride of different things that people can kind of feel with stuff like that too, and go through different experiences with something like Always a Girl. And you get down to Run Tonight. We talked about Outcast and Misfits and Me and what that does. And of course, Steering Wheel. Uh, we'll touch on Last Cigarette here in a little bit. But Low Lights is where I want to go because a great end to an album. Thank you. Yeah, and, and again, it's it's the same kind of thing. Like we. We had to start intentionally and you have to end intentionally too, you know, and, and the cool thing about low lights was the record was actually going to be called outcast misfits and me. That was going to be mm -hmm. the title of the record. And we kind of thought we were done writing for it. And I built this track that is now low lights and I sent it to Jarrett like I do. And we talked about some ideas and I had that melody for the, the pre-chorus and the chorus. And I just started singing this low lights thing and he's like, Oh, that's cool. So we ended up writing that song and it became the title track of the record and it felt like the bookend that the record needed to be like again like we start out telling the story of these outsiders and the angst in it and, and the feeling of being left out or on the outside of something and, and low lights is really kind of that celebration song of like hey everyone's an outsider we got a place for you here you know if you want if you want to be a part of our camp come yeah. on in you know we got a spot so it's really a, a joyful celebration mm -hmm. song which i think the album needed to, to end on that note you know yeah, it, it did. And like I said, it, again, people, again, start the top, go all the way through to 11. I, look, I had a lot of a long drive traveling for the vacation I had last week, too. And that's just the best time to listen to music. And of course, like driving to work or whatever, pick like your top two songs. But go in order, then you'll understand like the rhythm and the point of the particular album. And, and the reason these songs were put in this particular order is to, to have that that storytelling behind it, which this album, it, it really does. Again, from, uh, from Matt Jordan. So I, I'd say, hey, dealer's choice. Got to play one for us here. One of two today here on the show. Uh, I know we played Last Cigarette this morning. <laughs> People were loving it on KKTC, awesome. True Country, New Mexico, Colorado. So, hey, man, uh, what are we going to hear? Let's go. Well, I figure we talked about Anyone But Me as the first track, so I'll, I'll start with that one. I got to get right. my guitar in tune real quick and go for make it. sure it sounds halfway yeah. decent for you. <laughs> uh, are you hearing the guitar okay? Yeah, thanks for coming in, boy. Your little uh, boom, boom, boom they're going on right there. <laughs> He's getting in tune. So, uh, yeah, man, just good stuff. And like I said, I loved, uh, man, steering wheel on it. And, of course, uh, Steal Away the Night, one of my favorite tracks off of there before you get to Low Lights, which was track 10. So it's, uh, like I said, we got it broken down here, Matt, on, on the show. It's it's. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you doing your homework and, and listening to all of it. Yeah. It means a lot. Hey, man, that's, that's what we do here on the show, man. Differentiates from us, from everybody else out there. No doubt. That's right. Man. That's right, man. All right, I'll give this a shot. This is usually a song we do with the full band, so I'm not sure how it'll go acoustic, but we'll try. Here goes. This is anyone but me. The first first track on the record. I probably look like hell. Hell, I don't feel any better. Rolling in and out of town, just like a patch of weather. I do night through a speed trap like a bullet through the night. Flip the bird, never look back. No time for thinking twice. And I, yeah, I've gotten good at getting long gone. Don't try and prove me wrong. Cause it's hello, headlights, goodbye, review. Once you've been the dust, I ain't hung up over you. Yeah, I can burn a bridge fast as I can strike a match. Slam the hammer to the gas and gone I'll be Yeah, I can't outrun anyone but me The only thing that stays the same Is how I change just like the seasons I got no one else to blame 
And I've long run out of reasons Yeah, you may see that empty spot there in the shotgun seat But baby, you ain't the first one to try and make it me And I, yeah, I'm too far gone to turn it around Always a way to let you down Cause it's hello, headlights, goodbye Review, once you're in the dust I ain't hung up over you Yeah, I can burn a bridge Fast as I can strike a match Slam the hammer to the gas And gone I'll be Yeah, I can outrun anyone but me Maybe there's a nail out there for me to hang my hat Knowing me I'll probably just fly right Cause it's hello headlights goodbye review once you're in the dust I ain't hung up over you Yeah I can burn a bridge fast as I can strike a match slam the hammer to the gas and gone I'll be Yeah Came in clean, brother. Good stuff right there, awesome. too. Love it. <clears throat> Love that song, man. It sets the tone for the album. Very well, too. Back here with Matt Jordan on the uh, backstage pass. I love it. Just like a sec. I love the, the, the thing you put on your Instagram. It's like Heartland Rock meets country. It's just yeah. that's what you get when you get with Matt yeah, Jordan man. out there, too. I love it. It's just uh, it's one of those songs, man. You just can uh, feel it. And that's why we talk so much about that when setting a tone for that record. Fantastic. yeah yeah thank you man i i i do the heartland rock thing i grew up on a lot of bruce springsteen and bob <clears throat> here and tom petty and mm -hmm. um that's kind of some of the music i'm trying to to do and, and differentiate with a little bit you know oh, that's good stuff man we gotta take a time out pay some bills here on the show of course a lot more to come we're gonna cover last cigarette and a couple more tracks off the record again low lights across all the uh, streaming platforms out there make sure you guys go check it out and uh, give him a like across all the Social media, we'll talk about touring and, of course, some goals for 2024. Uh, looking to see Matt out there on the road, too, at a city near you. Tickets, things like that, all that good stuff where you guys can grab all that stuff from. But, of course, if you want to grab some jewelry now, too, I'm going to give away a trip here in a little bit. If you're looking for that perfect gift for your spouse, friend, family member, jewelry by Tommy's got you covered. Uh, email burleysystem at yahoo.com today to order. B-U-E-H-R-L-E, -E, burleysystem at yahoo.com today to order. Make sure you do it. It's handcrafted, handmade. It's jewelry by our friends over at Jewelry by Tommy. Quick time out coming up here, KKTC True Country 99.9. And of course, our friends out there, hightidecountry.net, always at the sportsguyspodcast.com, live on that website as of right now. If you want to tune in there too as well, tell your friends all about us. Go subscribe to the YouTube channel. Coming back, more with Matt Jordan. Quick time out. Stay tuned. Ever thought about owning your own business? Tanya Lapsley Cockett did. She decided a little over five years ago that she was going to be an entrepreneur. So she started her travel business. Tanya is married and works a full-time job. Her business has given her amazing opportunities. Not only does she get to help people create memories by booking their vacations, sporting and entertainment tickets, rental cars, etc., but it has also allowed her to help other families create legacy income. The travel industry is extremely lucrative and is an $8 trillion industry. The travel industry is projected to earn in excess of $15 trillion over the next 10 years. The travel industry pays its professionals up to 70 to 80% commission on the travel that they book for themselves and their clients. As a travel business owner, Tanya books travel and teaches others how to own and operate their own travel business. She is a director in training on the marketing side of her business, where she has helped over 90 families start their own businesses. If you're interested in owning your own travel business, please contact Tanya at 917-743-1199 or at ladytlc3555 at me.com.
The Caden Gordon Show. Today's best country mix is a two-hour show playing independent and mainstream country music you know and love. Be sure to check it out at thecanegordonshow.com for more information on the show. The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... And back here on the show, Matt Jordan joining us here, talking about the new album, Low Lights, across all those digital platforms. Came out the day right before my birthday, February 22nd, across all those platforms. Make sure you guys check it out out there, too. We're diving into a lot of the songs, hearing some stuff here on the show, too. i got to ask you about this. Um, you know, touring, I know, is kind of slow right now. Unless people are kind of doing, like, I guess, some, some of the headline things out there, or maybe kind of be an opening act, support act, if you will, for a specific tour. Man, this is a great album, and I'm sure in your camp this has been talked about to get out there and and push this to the fans and you know set up the merch booth and do the typical concert thing that it's going out there to, and eventually it's going to pick up again, right? Yeah, for sure, man. I think the the hardest thing for us is we're completely independent, so there's no booking mm -hmm. agent or manager yeah. or anything to you know get us on on those tours. So what we what we've done the last couple of years has been just one off shows. You know, someone will be passing through town and they'll pick up a show here and there, and and we've done a lot of stuff around the Midwest on those one offs and. Um, the record's going over well, you know, when we, when we get to play it live, um, and this time of year is always a bit slow, you know, the, the country genre, it seems like a lot of that stuff happens in the summer and fall, a lot of the, the tours and stuff. So we're always busier, you know, May through October than any other mm -hmm. time of year. Um, so we've gotten to do some cool stuff already this year, but, but looking forward to, to picking up and, and really testing the record on the road, you know, looking forward to it, to hope to see you at, if you're in town there, we're going to be there for uh, CMA fest coming up there, June uh six to the ninth or somewhere in there the dates i know it's more seven to nine for a weekend but uh, a lot of cool things i'm seeing artists out there kind of get on stages already promoting stuff on social media they're going to be on this specific stage if they're not actually doing of course nissan and some stuff out there especially for a lot right. of artists that are independent don't have the management of the booking things like that are you looking at uh some type of role with cma fest this year i would love to i'm still trying to figure out how to get on it but uh <laughs> I, I would love to get on it for sure it's a it's such a cool event you know it'd be fun to be a part of it officially I'll tell you what, man, like I said, hey, like I said, you never put it past us here on the backstage pass. Like I said, to <laughs> open up some doors and, and talk about it. Because I'm going to be there, too. We just had a great time at, at CRS, did the benefit show for Toby Keith out there, too. Let me ask you about that. You know, obviously, you look, losing an icon, consider and talk about this guy all day and what he meant to, to country music, 30 years in the industry. Uh, probably never wrote a song or sang a song he didn't like, or, or if he did, he just, man, he sang it to the best of his ability. Looking back at it, uh, 30, what, uh, 32 number one hits, 20 of them he wrote by himself. I mean, Crazy. just the staggering numbers out there. Just talk about, you know, what he what he meant to you as an artist and the impact he had on country music. Yeah, I mean, for me as an artist, like, you know, a lot of my stuff is not um, that kind of 90s country sound. But uh, the stuff I listened to growing up, like I said, was a lot of that Heartland Rock stuff. But the country artists I grew up on were George Strait, Garth Brooks, Toby Keith, Brooks and Dunn. <laughs> and I remember watching Toby Keith, you know, music videos on CMT as a kid. Uh, and they were just, the songs were always great. And I, I grew up listening to the songwriting. Like my dad kind of raised me to listen to stories and lyrics and stuff. And uh, like a song, like you shouldn't kiss me like this. Like, man, those songs were just great. Even outside of the giant hits. Like he just, I didn't realize at the time that he wrote his own stuff or like that. He was such a prolific writer, you know? Um, so yeah, he really was just an icon. And I think somebody who maybe got overlooked the last couple of years of his career, because after Red Solo Cup, I feel like people didn't take him as seriously, but man, he was such a, a great artist. Um, so yeah, such such a such a loss to to the industry and in, in the genre. Hey man, that soul lives on, and like I said, all the impact he made there. Hell, we actually put Trailer Choir back together. Some of his former label mates on Show Dog Records and uh, Flynnville Train came out, and it was cool to see Carter's Chord. And I know for for that too, the Trailer Choir hadn't played since 2010. It was big. Oh wow. Yet. Butter Fortney was out there, Crystal Hoyt. It was kind of, kind of cool to see that. And just all the great artists that he, he as Butter told me, we were sitting down eating a burger at, at Bar Lines. And he goes, man, 
here's a guy that I owe my life to. Like I mm -hmm. met my wife through him. I yeah. met, I had a career. I went and toured with him. Yeah. You know, I was on his label for, he's one of the nicest guys ever to meet mm -hmm. in, in the industry. And just, man, he, he paved the way too for so many uh, great artists like yourself, you know, coming up in the industry. Hey, you know, touch on um, last cigarette because the, the, the feeling was this morning was a great feeling out there on KKTC, our station, New Mexico. And of course, Colorado that plays us out there too, seven days a week. Uh, they love this song, dude. And, 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 and again, you can kind of see getting toward the end of that record where it's like, you know, that roller coaster ride takes you toward the end. You got to listen to everything else before you get to it mm -hmm. to understand the storyline of the song. But th this is a good one, man. Thank you. That one. Um, yeah, it, it feels a lot more early 2000s rock than it does today's sure. country. You know, it was kind of that stuff that I was listening to in high school and, and middle school and stuff uh, sonically. And it kind of came came about in a, just a fever pitch that Jared and I had one night. We were writing on Zoom at like 11 p.m. to like 2 a.m. And we wrote three songs in a row. And, and the idea of the songs that we wrote were actually like going to flow right into one another. Uh, and the other two ended up not making making the record and Last Cigarette Survived. Um, but yeah, it was that was a really fun one. It was a a lyric that Jarrett had, and he almost never writes lyrics without music. Like mm -hmm. he, when he writes lyrics down, he's almost always putting chords to them. He had just kind of started the first verse, and I built this track, and and I just started singing what he sent me over the track, and then we got to the chorus, and, and the song just kind of fell out. Um, yeah, and it, it happened real organically, which is always always fun when songs come together like that, you know. It's awesome too, and I had to ask you about this too because a lady that you might know. I got to feature on a song called Greatest Story, a lady named Kaylee Bishop, who yeah. actually, ironically, it's funny how it works out, timing is everything. She's coming on this very show tomorrow to talk about her new I single saw that. coming out, too. So it's yeah. like, what a, what a you know, just match made in heaven, if you will, right there, too. Yeah. Timing being perfect. Uh, how did this this get going? First of all, that's the fourth song uh, on the record, mm -hmm. Low Lights, out there. People can check out. And that's the cool thing about the collaboration, which we're seeing more and more in the business. I got to see her at the Toby Keith. Uh, fundraiser she came out and we, we chatted a little bit too which is awesome and contacted me today about her new stuff coming out but just her your vocals her vocals man what a great match in made in heaven well thank you i appreciate you saying that i was scared to death to do the song with kaylee because she's such a good singer and i was really <laughs> worried about uh singing after her because I, I start the song so i was like i can handle that but then she does the second verse i was like shoot i gotta come back in on the chorus and i'm be exposed <laughs> everyone's gonna know who the real vocalist is here you know uh, but that was cool. That was uh, Jarrett and I had been trying to write a duet, and we had this song called "Play the Part" that we mm -hmm. thought was going to be a duet, but we just hadn't fallen in love with it yet. And then we wrote "Greatest Story" separately, and it was going to be just me singing it. And then we were in Nashville, and I didn't know Kaylee yet, but Jarrett knew her from from years ago, and mm -hmm. we saw her play it around. And he's like, "That's who we need to get on a duet if we ever finish a duet." And after we finished writing Greatest Story, I called him a couple of days after we finished it. And I said, hey, I think this is the duet. What if we found someone to sing the second verse? And he said, I'll text Kaylee right now. So he texted her and I together and sent her the track and, and asked if she'd have any interest. And she was gracious enough to hop on. And uh, I met her like the day that we were in the studio together. Mm -hmm. um, and she was sweet as can be, incredibly talented, uh, really, really honored to, to have her on the record. A uh, great artist, too. We'll talk to her tomorrow here on the Backstage Pass and, of course, get uh, the latest on her music out there, too, that she sent us today. Trust me, you're not going to want to miss that show uh, for somebody who's that talented who just uh, can do anything <clears throat> in the music industry to put her voice on anything out there that somebody writes, and it just comes to to life. Huge, huge praise for Miss uh, Kaylee Bishop out there, too. Mm -hmm. We'll take our last time out coming back with uh, Matt. Of course, we'll do a little rapid fire out there too a little series of funny questions we get to know him more at least i know him you guys might know him personal faces things he likes favorite foods and stuff like that too when it comes down to it and uh you know play steve nashville and binge watching shows and sports fans just little questions like that too we'll take a quick time out for our friends in kktc true country 99.9 hightidecountry.net and of course the sports guys podcast.com we're live on that very website as of right now you catch all the shows there archived and live every week too but of course you want to buy matt some jewelry or me or anybody else out there, your spouse, friend, family member, Jewelry by Tommy has got you covered. Email our friends at burleysystem at yahoo.com today to order. Check them out. It's handcrafted, handmade. It's Jewelry by Tommy out there, too. Quick timeout. Coming back. More of the Backstage Pass with Matt Jordan. Stay tuned. The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish.
The Caden Gordon Show, today's best country mix, is a two-hour show playing independent and mainstream country music you know and love. Be sure to check it out at thecadengordonshow.com for more information on the show. Ever thought about owning your own business? Tanya Lapsley Cockett did. She decided a little over five years ago that she was going to be an entrepreneur, so she started her travel business. Tanya is married and works a full-time job. Her business has given her amazing opportunities. Not only does she get to help people create memories by booking their vacations, sporting and entertainment tickets, rental cars, etc., but it has also allowed her to help other families create legacy income. The travel industry is extremely lucrative and is an $8 trillion industry. The travel industry is projected to earn in excess of $15 trillion over the next 10 years. The travel industry pays its professionals up to 70 to 80% commission on the travel that they book for themselves and their clients. As a travel business owner, Tanya books travel and teaches others how to own and operate their own travel business. She is a director in training on the marketing side of her business, where she has helped over 90 families start their own businesses. If you're interested in owning your own travel business, please contact Tanya at 917-743-1199 or at ladytlc3555 at me.com. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host, Kirsty Kraus, as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... And, of course, catch us at seven days a week out there, too. KKTC True Country 99.9. And, of course, our friends, High Tide Country, uh, net. Thank you guys for last year on High Tide Country, a quarter of a million listeners in 2023. It's amazing what you do out there to <clears throat> support artists, support their music, their brand, and support us here for what we do at the Backstage Pass. You know, i got to ask you about this one. We did some shows in the past. You and I have done uh, The Gamble, which was that deluxe one I got to dive into last year. Another one, man, that set the tone for the record and just really brought that Heartland uh, sound out to it was Night on Fire. And I know that's got to be fun to still play live, right? We don't play that one live much. And okay. I, I don't I know it. why. Because it's one of my favorite <laughs> yeah. songs I've ever yeah. written. I don't know why we don't play it. Um, we've played it a couple times, and, and it goes over well. It, it's a hard thing picking a, a set list for a live show, especially when you're opening, because we have 30, 45-minute slots, you know? Mm, true. And so we're always trying to get the new music out. And so it's always kind of like, like we're not playing much off the gamble record anymore because okay. we're trying to get the low light songs Low-lights, out. There, you know? yeah. But not on fire. That might've been Jarrett and I talk about that song all the time. I wrote that with him as well. And uh, we talk about that one all the time because it was, it was just probably the most fun song to write that I've, that I've ever been a part of. That's good stuff. No doubt too. And I love called me crazy. And like I said, all that on there too. I mean, heart of the heartland was something off there that I really built a playlist off of too, with just songs that just really, make you feel something and resonate. And that's the best part of being a fan or like I said, media host of country music. The way I've done it for the past five years is just awesome to hear songs that really just stick with you for, for a long time. And that's what's so good about the, the songwriting out there. Well, I know you got one more for us and I'm going to have two other questions with the rapid fire here too. Again, the record is low lights and you can actually check him out across all the social media out there too, at the same time. And I believe that website is it's still Matt Jordan songwriter.com. You got it. All right, man, look at that. See, the homework yes, continues here on the backstage <laughs> pass. And we were, we were double-check ourselves if that wasn't correct, but it is. MattJordanSongwriter.com <clears throat> out there. Get some merch and, of course, hop on when the other tour dates uh, shows are announced in your particular area for 2024. Uh, what's up, man? Off low lights. What are we going to hear? I'm going to play a song called Don't Mean. I think it's number two on the record. All right, here we go. I thought that it was just a season A little time and space to clear your head Weeks turned into months turned into never coming back Turned into a lonely half-made bed Now lipstick's on the coffee cups and I probably ought to wash them 
And that shampoo in the shower go to waste I've been through hell and back Just trying to make peace with the fact that what I thought we had just got erased Cause I put away the bottle That don't mean that I don't drink Stay up all night long But that don't mean that I don't drink I quit a thousand times But that don't mean that I don't smoke I watch you drive away But that don't mean I let you go Yeah, watch you drive away But that don't mean I let you go Yeah, most of the time I do all right with life. When anybody asks me how I've been, but now and then they catch me in the middle of a memory. There I get to rambling on again. Cause I put away the bottle, that don't mean that I don't drink. Stay up all night long, but that don't mean that I don't drink. Been a thousand times, that don't mean that I don't smoke. Watch you drive away, that don't mean I let you go. Yeah, watch you drive away, that don't mean I let you go. Still waiting on the front porch, counting headlights till I see. I put away the bottle, that don't mean that I don't drink Stay up all night long, but that don't mean that I don't drink Win a thousand times, but that don't mean that I don't smoke Why do you drive away, but that don't mean I let you go Yeah, why do you drive away, but that don't mean I let you go Matt Jordan here on the Backstage Pass again, KKTC True Country, 99.9 of friends in Taos, New Mexico, and up into Colorado, and of course out there too, hightidecountry.net. Low lights, you'll get to hear a little bit of that, a little bit of this, and a whole lot more if you go stream it now across all the platforms. And hey, the mailbox money, they all love that. So streams get higher, artists gets paid more. That's how it works out there with the streaming. So make sure you guys go fit that into your schedule. Hey, we'll do a couple of fun ones here. Uh, for me, I found myself looking at vacation last week at all. Uh, well, of course, Cardinal fan, <clears throat> I'm not afraid to admit it, but you stick by your team out there for the NFL. So for me, it was like offensive line, corner, secondary. What are we going to do here? Wide receiver. Uh, we obviously have Kyler Murray as a quarterback. Did you find yourself, I mean, do you play fantasy football or do you get caught up in the Tennessee Titans or an NFL team that you root for? I don't play fantasy football because I did a little bit in college and I was so bad. I <laughs> I had to stop. <laughs> Um, I, so I'm from St. Louis, so my team was mm -hmm. the Rams, but True. I can't support them anymore since they left for, <laughs> yeah. for LA. So most people in St. Louis went with the chiefs. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know, I, I, there's something about the chiefs I don't like. So my, my team lately has been the Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles because I love how Jalen hurts handled mm -hmm. the Alabama, Oklahoma situation when he was in college. So I've kind of followed him since, mm -hmm. uh, so I've kind of been rooting for the Eagles and people call me a bandwagon fan, but they're all rooting for the chiefs. So I, I don't I'm know. in Texas and I'm an Arizona Cardinals fan. Like, <laughs> How did that come together? I'm like, cause I just can't stand the Cowboys. And after the Texans really just dumpster fire tra <laughs> trading off pieces. Now they rebuild they're in a better situation now. But once I left an organization and made the jump, call it what you want to call it, man, call it spade a spade. But it's, it's just, for me, it was like, Hey, bought into Kyler and Kyler had the Texas connection down here too, as well. And of course yeah. all the, the stuff in Oklahoma, winning the Heisman, things like that. I will say this. I found myself all the NFL free agency signings that got caught up in, which I thought the Cardinals did a very good job, too, taking that mentality of, like, the Detroit Lions to bring mm -hmm. it back to kind of full life. Saquon Barkley and Philly, dude, what a great fit that's going to be. I'm excited about that one, man. I uh, I didn't see that coming, and they announced that the other day, and I got I got pretty excited about that one because <laughs> – <laughs> they they just kind of fell apart at the end of the season, and their their mm -hmm. offense just wasn't wasn't hitting the way it was early in the season. So I'm hoping that he yeah. can bring a new new fire behind the offense. So that'll be 
he and Jalen back there will be pretty fun to watch together, I think. That's going to be a one-two tandem, my friend. That's going to yeah. look real good yeah, on the gridiron coming up next year, too, for those guys to do it. you still got A.J. Brown and, of course, the receivers out there, too. It's going to be an exciting time for <clears throat> Sirianni. And, of course, he changed coordinators, I believe, offense and defense. So there's going to be a lot of cool things. And I love it, too, because, like I said, you know, for, for me there, too, we got a great head coach in Jonathan Gannon, too, who knows a little, little something about uh, playing. You saw what the Colts did this year, Shane Steichen, who used to be with uh, Philly, who's now the head coach of Indianapolis. So it's going to be a, a fun year for the NFL. I don't think there's like a clear-cut team going into it for the fall that's going to be out there. There's a lot of parity in the game now, too, you know? Yeah, I think I think that I, I assume the Chiefs will be the favorite going in again, but I think there'll be some they'll have some tough matchups to get there, I think. I mean, you, you think about the Lions and you think about the Eagles, like, if they get to the Super Bowl, it's not going to be easy, you know? But, but the AFC's tough, too. Like, Baltimore is going to be really strong again. Ooh, um, you know, I, I don't know the status of Joe Burrow, but the Bengals, as long as Burrow's playing, the Bengals are always going to be tough. <laughs> you know, I heard any logistics on him too. I know they made some <clears throat> great signings. I mean, the Houston Texans did well. The only team that shocked me they didn't do more in free agency was, uh, of course, uh, the Dallas Cowboys. But I mean, that's another topic for another day. You and I could get on and, and yeah. you never know. What, you never know what they're going to do, man. <laughs> <laughs> America's team. Well, they certainly, they certainly yeah. didn't show it in free agency. And then he comes out, Jerry Jones being the person he is, Hey, we're going to, we're all in for 2024. Yeah. You uh, signed a long snapper and uh, a backup linebacker. And what else did you do when it came to impact the free agent signings? Zero, nothing, not a, so hopefully uh you'll figure I, out not, one day man i don't know i don't know you know i'm just not sure Dak's the guy anymore matt i just i, I can't i don't know it's it's kind of my still my second favorite team down here but man it's hard to really just watch cowboy football anymore it's tough yeah i mean he's he's so great i just don't know that it's the right pairing i think he could go, go be the guy somewhere else but um for whatever reason it's just not working in dallas since he's got there and um i don't know i i respected how he handled that that post uh playoff con press conference mm -hmm. though when they asked about the the firing of the coach and he said if you're gonna ask about him you gotta ask about me too you know and i thought that was that was a, a fair comment and I, I, I had a lot of respect for the way he handled that yeah no doubt i think that's that's the cool thing is like just take that ownership because i'm the quarterback of america's team i make yeah. you know 35 40 mil a year whatever it is too right. much money but at the same time the fans come out want to see the product on the field and they got their ass whipped by the green bay packers there's, there's, yeah. there's no cutting corners yeah. <laughs> you know, green, green green bay is another team that i think will be tough next year that's a they, they got a good I, I was surprised by them this season and they're only going to build on that yeah. i think so they'll be tough, tough too tough to see aaron jones leave go to the vikings cross over to the dark side but i will say <laughs> that uh the running game with jordan love with josh jacobs coming as a free agent and aj Dillon coming back too and of course all the young players uh they have green bay is gonna be a fun uh, fun team to watch. Hey, yeah. what are you speaking of watching? What are you getting into now? Binge watching on television outside of sports, or I know this week is March Madness, so I'm gonna have every basketball game on for this week to watch that because I did my brackets and I picked UConn. Are you into March Madness? Is there another series you get into? Oh, I love March Madness, man. It's my favorite yeah. time of year. <laughs> it's that's that's what I'll be watching for the next couple of weeks. I I love it so much. Uh, I got UConn winning in both my brackets. I think. Okay. Um, I just okay. don't have like that. I don't know. To me, there's no one else that looks as strong as them. They beat everybody handedly this season. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I think I think UConn's going to make another run for it. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I love the next two days are my favorite days of the year because I just sit here and I'll have my, my iPad right next to me watching <laughs> while I work all day, you know. I'm with you the same way. I'll be at work doing that too. Put it up there on the screen or whatever else. But, yeah, it's a fun time to do it. I got UConn and Marquette in the, the final two in, in Glendale, where it's the final four is being played this year. North Carolina, I want to say I, I had a pick to do uh, to make the final four, and right offhand, I just can't remember the fourth team, but I want a championship game is UConn and Marquette. Oh, it's Tennessee. Tennessee's my fourth team. So, it, again, this is the fun time of the year, 15 and twos, 16 and ones. All the seating is out the window. Yeah, uh, You know a 12 is going to be to five. I mean, look out. Yeah. And James Madison's going to be fun to, to watch in this tournament. Yeah. Utah State, uh, Grand Canyon, there's so many good teams, Matt, in this tournament. It is who, who does Grand Canyon play in the first round? I believe does Grand Canyon. Not sure if they have. Go back and look at the bracket too. But I, I want to say it's got to be. I don't want to say Baylor, but I could be wrong. But if you look that up, we can we'll confirm it here too. But I want to say Grand Canyon's got a very favorable winning winnable game. Yeah, whoever I don't round. remember who they're playing, but I remember picking them and and at least one of my brackets because I did too. Yeah, I I I, I don't I think there's going to be. I think the five, twelve, six, eleven, seven, ten games. I think there'll be a lot of upsets this year. Yeah, and, and and really for me, it could be some nines, knock off some eights too. That are going to be some good stuff. This is a cool thing. I I, I really will say I had the the number ones kind of there, of course, with UConn and North Carolina, Houston. I expect to rebound from the blowout against Iowa State in the Big Twelve championship game. But same time for us down here where I live, 
hey, Coog's got to show me something different, man. Play a little zone, uh, get back to man to man, score the ball because you know this time of the year, Matt, you got to make shots in this yeah. tournament. If you don't make shots, you're going home. Yeah, I mean the interesting thing about tournament too is it's just it's all about who's on fire and who's not, you know. And, yeah. and so you see a lot of these guys who won their conference championships just ready to go, and they that's why the upsets happen, I think. But Houston's got to step it up because they did not look good against Iowa State. <laughs> no. But but they've I mean they've been great all year. They'll they'll figure it out. Yeah, fourth largest blowout. I think it was one of the what forty one points was the lowest since like the eighties. It was like, crazy, oh, man. They're such wow. a they got so much firepower. I was I was shocked they, I was shocked by that game. And Iowa State could have easily been a, a number one seed. I tell you, who's got to have just uh, not beginner's luck, but reversible luck. <laughs> when every time they get a number one seed, Purdue just sinks early. Purdue's got to really prove something to people that the, these upsets over the past couple of years, including a 16 seed. I can't. Was it Fairly Dickinson? Might have been Fairly Dickinson. Yeah, One of the ones just, over the last couple of years. Last year, two years yeah. ago, I think. Yeah. So Purdue's got a lot to prove to me to uphold the number yeah. one seed. That I think should have went to Iowa State. Yeah. So much about the tournament. So much of the tournament, I think, is about matchups. And what Purdue's got is they got a really big, good big man. But like, I think they see they would see Creighton. I think in the Elite Eight. If they yeah. if Creighton made it out or, or maybe the Sweet Sixteen and like Creighton has a really good big man, so Purdue's hard to bet on because if they face a really good big man, there it comes down to guard play, you know. And, oh, and I yeah. think Creighton's guards, for example, are better than Purdue. So um, yeah, man, it'll be interesting. But I, I agree with you. I think Iowa State could have could have made an argument for, it's for that number be fun, one seed. Man. And that twelve five matchup, <clears throat> just checked it out because it popped up on my screen. It's coming up uh, Friday, March twenty second. One of the late games. Grand Canyon's got uh, St. Mary's of California. Another yes, yes, good one out there in a twelve five matchup too as well and that's going to be a lot of fun too i know that uh, grand canyon actually won the whack tournament and beat uh, ut arlington in that okay. too as well for the whack tournament there which was played last week but that one is coming up against st mary's coming up this friday the uh, 22nd hey give me some favorite foods what, what are you craving right now what are you getting into i've been eating a lot of barbecue lately i'm from st louis so i always kind of gravitate <laughs> to barbecue <laughs> um yeah i've been eating a lot of barbecue I'm, I'm kind of doing a weird diet i'm just eating like meat and fruit right now <laughs> <laughs> um, so a lot of barbecue lately and, and like chicken wings and stuff. There you go. See, I'm going to decide what I want to get tonight. Barbecue or chicken wings. That was on the menu there. I'm glad you kind of wet the appetite there too. I'll tell you what's going to wet the appetite is this album, Low Lights. Make sure you guys go get it across all the streaming platforms out there. If you haven't checked it out already, especially in our markets out there at hightidecountry.net and our friends at KKTC, True Country 99.9. Glad to play Last Cigarette this morning. Brother, you come back anytime. We'll do a whole sports show full of stuff. The madness comes down. Always love having you, man. Appreciate you dropping us a vine here to to get it on, talk about the music. And I know, man, it's just always great catching up, but he really is. Thanks so much, man. I appreciate you making time to do this, and uh, I'd love to come back next time. You got it. Matt Jordan out there, too, one of the best up and rising country emerging artists in the industry right now, too. Again, thanks to our sponsors out there, too. We're not done today. We're back with another one. Of course, Kaylee Bishop coming on tomorrow. And then Friday, our friend uh, Jennifer Hart will stop by and also from American Idol. Uh, she's blowing up out there, too. Olivia Rock's coming out with a new track and some new projects, too. We'll talk to Olivia about coming up on Friday, which is the 22nd. Happy March Madness to everybody out there, too. Get your brackets in tow. Expect a few first-round busts to be in match predicted for you right there, too, here on the Backstage Pass, powered by the Sports Guys podcast.com and of course hightidecountry.net and our friends at kktc true country 99.9 back in a flash you another show coming up today stay tuned